Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service this morning from St Stephen's Church in Aberdeen. I do hope and pray that you all will know the presence and blessing of God as we worship together this morning. Unfortunately, Maggie is unable to be with us this morning and we wish Maggie a speedy recovery. Today is Palm Sunday. It is the day we remember and celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on a donkey. Today is also the start of Holy Week, which is the week leading up to Easter. So although Palm Sunday is a celebration, it is also Jesus' first step towards his death on a cross. With that in mind, let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. The psalmist says, We praise you, God, we praise you, for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. Let's sing to God's glory, hymn 367, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. That ancient song we sing, for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Let us pray. Gracious God, we will hear again today the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem on a donkey, the King of the universe, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Love. We will sing Hosanna, just as the people did that day, and we will cheer aloud for the Messiah, the Saviour of all. Just like the people of long ago, we join the celebration of Christ among us. And just as they did, when the cheering dies down, we too easily forget. We forget the love he came to show us. We forget the care he shared with everyone whom he met. We forget the words of forgiveness that were constantly on his lips. We forget his words of invitation. Follow me, he said, to the people then and now, and just like the people of Jerusalem, we neglect to follow. When life does not seem to be going our way, when we're afraid to stand up for what is right, when we allow ourselves to be blindly led by those around us, when we place too much importance on the things of this world, we forget to shout Hosanna, and instead 
crucify can be heard from our lips. Just like the people in Jerusalem, we are too easily distracted, too easily caught up in the events happening around us. We turn away from Jesus and find it hard to turn back. Merciful God, we lay our sins at your feet. Loving Parent God, we are sorry for the times when we have betrayed your love in Christ Jesus. Help us to make a fresh start, to know that we need not continue on this road, to recognise that through the love of Jesus, the road back has been made smooth for us. Forgive us those times when we have failed to live as your children. Restore us now in your sight, O God. In the week that lies ahead, this week we call Holy Week, help us to see anew the generosity of your love, the extraordinary abundance of life we find in the person of your Son, Jesus. Send your Spirit into our hearts and the hearts of those around us, that all may hear the story of the love you have for us. Let us see in the story of Jesus' life, death and resurrection that you, O God, our Creator, Redeemer and Wise Counselor, love us with an endless love. Seek us with a longing heart and welcome, welcome us with arms stretched out to hold us. May we return your love with the commitment of our lives. May we seek you every moment of every day and stretch out our arms to receive the embrace we long to know. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, invite us once more to live in your kingdom, alongside all of your children here on earth, not waiting for tomorrow or Easter or eternity, but recognising that eternity begins again today in the presence of you, our God. Hear the prayers of your children as we pray in the words Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting, because the Sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Our next reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. We're now going to sing the hymn 314, Child in the Manger. Gospel reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11. Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as King. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you and just as you enter it you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you doing this, say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. And as they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat in it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word, and to his name be all glory, honour and praise. Let's sing hymn 364, All Glory, Lord and Honour, to you, Redeemer King.
Today is Palm Sunday, the day when we celebrate the entry of King Jesus into Jerusalem. It was a day that marked the beginning of an incredible week, a week that would see Jesus cheered, then arrested, tried, condemned and crucified. But as that week came to an end, another week began, just as the previous week had begun, with a celebration. As Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, a very large crowd gathered to welcome him. Some of them spread their cloaks on the road for Jesus to ride on, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Why would they do that? They were treating Jesus like a king. The Bible tells us that the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. I wonder what's the biggest crowd you've ever been part of. Was it a celebration or a protest? Were you a participant or an observer? In 2012, I was on the seafront at Ballygally in County Antrim in the crowds as the Olympic torch came by before the London Olympics were held that year. There was cheering and clapping and a long procession of athletes and backup vehicles and police motorbikes. So much excitement as we waited for the athlete carrying the torch to come into sight. Imagine the crowds on that first Palm Sunday. They had not gathered to watch a parade, but to be part of a procession into Jerusalem as pilgrims for the Passover festival. Here are some things about Palm Sunday that reminds us Christ is King. God's word tells us that people cut up palm branches and waved them in the air, laid them in the ground before Jesus as he rode into the city. The palm branch represented goodness and victory and was symbolic of the final victory he would soon fulfil over death. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? From 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. Jesus chose to ride in on a donkey, directly fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, Shout aloud, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In biblical times, it was common for kings or important people to arrive by a procession riding on a donkey. The donkey symbolised peace. So those who chose to ride them showed that they came with peaceful intentions. Jesus, even then, reminded us that he is the Prince of Peace. When the people shouted Hosanna, they were hailing Christ as King. That word actually means save now. And though in their own minds, they waited for an earthly King, God had a different way in mind of bringing true salvation to all who would trust in him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 42, the Bible tells us that Jesus wept for Jerusalem. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you... Even you had only known in this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. In the midst of the praise of the moment, he knew in his heart that it wouldn't be long, that these same people would soon turn their backs on him, betray him and crucify him. His heart broke with the reality of how much they needed a saviour. Palm Sunday reminds us that the reign of Christ is far greater than any that the mind of man could ever conceive or plan. God had the ultimate plan of sending his son to fight the final battle over death. This is the greatness of why we celebrate this week. 
because of Christ's ultimate sacrifice, we can be set free of death. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. It's from John chapter 11 and verse 25. The people greeted Jesus as a king that day. Today, Jesus wants to be your king, and he will be, if you allow him to come into your heart and drill over your life. He is gently waiting for you to ask him to come into your life. We have so much to be grateful for as we enter Holy Week. May God direct our thoughts and attention towards what matters most, Jesus Christ, our King. Let's focus on worshipping our God, thanking him for the gift of the sacrifice, celebrating the power of the resurrection and the new life found in him alone. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen. Let's now sing hymn 356, Meekness and Majesty. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for opportunities to gather in your name, to remember again the story of your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. At the beginning of this Holy Week, our thoughts turn particularly to the last week of Jesus' earthly life, a life filled with jeering voices, betrayal, denial and abandonment, a week that ended in mockery, cruelty and death. Our hearts break as we think of the suffering endured by an innocent man, a man who came 
only to teach us of the great love you have for each of us. Holy and suffering God, we look around our world this week and wonder what has changed. Innocent people still suffer at the hands of baying crowds. Your children are still being condemned to death by cruel and uncaring regimes. Across your world, your people suffer from the consequences of betrayal as we continue, often from ignorance, to turn our backs on situations where human rights are violated, situations where human rights do not exist. We watch news reports on our TV screens showing forests burning, ice caps melting, landscapes flooding, species dying. And we continue to close our eyes in denial of the part we play in climate change. As businesses fail and jobs are lost in the current pandemic, we see a rise in unemployment and an increase of families and individuals left in poverty across our world. Too many people abandoned in circumstances beyond their control by their fellow human beings. In a world which you created, filled with diversity of colour, gender, age, intellectual ability, physical ability and creed, we witness too often the cruel mockery of those in minority groups. In this week of all weeks, we remember, when we remember Jesus, who gave up all he had in heaven and on earth to show us how love should be, we must stop and wonder, what have we learned from his selfless giving? We must search our hearts for evidence that things have changed, that humanity has woken up to the extent of your love for all. We must find new ways to care as Jesus cared. Almighty God, God of the great and the small, the old and the young, the sick and the well, the newborn and the dying, the imprisoned and the free, the believers and the non-believers, the black and the white, the rich and the poor. Open the eyes of the world to the plight of the world. Send your Holy Spirit to places of war and peace, abundance and scarcity, polar ice caps and equatorial forests, country villages and high, highly populated cities. Send your spirit across our world to awaken us to the many and varied needs of your people and give us the strength, commitment and willingness to live in a world that cares for all and worships you. That Christ's living and dying may not be in vain and his resurrection may be the gateway through which we all pass to share in eternal life with you. Loving, holy God, open our hearts to be your children in every aspect of our shared lives, that we may be the people you created us to be, one people of one great and all-loving God, now and for eternity. Amen.
I hope you felt blessed by our worship this morning. Before the benediction, I'd like to add my thanks to everyone who took part this morning, surely for reading and the message, and as always our organist Callum for playing and compiling the service. Thank you, Callum. Please join with me now in saying the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.